Bianami at least got a chance to speak for himself on the subject yesterday after Coach Rivera did. Here's Eric Bianami from his Tuesday meeting with reporters. One thing I am, I'm an open book, and I always invite players in. But also, too, as I've, I've gone through this process, yes, I am uh, intense. And I would be afraid, too, to start if I didn't know him. But on top of that, one thing they do appreciate is this. I'm always going to be upfront, and I'm always going to be honest. Just like I stated when I first got here, we all got to get uncomfortable to get comfortable, okay? There's some new demands and expectations that I expect. I expect us to be the team that we're supposed to be. It's not going to be easy, and everybody ain't going to like the process. But when it's all said and done with, my job is to make sure that we're doing it the right way. There's a way to do it. Now, do they understand that? Yes, because they're seeing the results. Will everybody buy in? I believe so. But if not, it's okay. Because you know what? My number one job is to help take these guys to another level and I can see it because when you think about where we started in the spring to where we are right now we're making a lot of strides I'm proud of these guys it's been some excuse my language some good to watch sorry mom uh <laughs> sorry coach so uh <laughs> yeah uh but, but 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 look I I thought he was gonna say Will all of them buy into it? Probably not, but that's okay. We got 90 guys out there. There's only going to be 53 when it's all said and done. If you don't buy out, buy in, you 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 buy out. And uh, I love the comment, you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. You, 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 what, what they've been doing hasn't worked. Exactly, Mike. That's the bottom line. Right. This is what happens when you dramatically change a culture, when you try to take a team that knows nothing about playing in the postseason, much less winning in the postseason, and you attempt to inject a championship mindset. He's bringing with him from Kansas City five years of working with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid exactly. together and everything great that has flowed from that. And he can put he can put a ring on each middle finger if these guys don't like it, and he can show it to them that that's what we're trying to do. This is the standard we're trying to meet. And if you don't like it, see you later. Yeah. We want volunteers, not hostages. Right. Bye-bye. Go do something else. Football's not for you if you can't deal with what I'm trying to do to make you the best you can be. That, that's exactly it. it. It's not always easy, you know, but being great's not easy. Yeah, we can be comfortable in 6 and 11 and 7 and 10 again. Great. Great. Oh, we'll have fun and tell jokes and all that. Or we can be in reality. Wear right? Gilligan hats. Well, yeah, right. Or we can be in reality and realize that the NFL season is actually going to have more uncomfortable moments than, than comfortable ones. And we better get used to adjusting to them, right? You're going to, hey, even the Chiefs, hey, you're, well, we got our star quarterback. He's limping around. It's uncomfortable. We got to overcome it. Oh, it's the Eagles. It's the greatest team we've seen built on a football field in the last 15 years. It's going to be uncomfortable to beat them, right? That's what he's trying to do. And, and things have been a little warm and cozy there in Washington and that end. And look at the results, you know. So that, that's what he's trying to change. You said it look right. The, yeah, look, 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 look at that graphic. Right. Look at that graphic. Exactly. Look at the Chiefs. Exactly. Look at the commanders over the last five years. Yeah. You don't win in the NFL when your offense is that god-awful. 29 last, 25, 23, 24. You can't win no. if your offense is that bad. Defense wins championships, but offense is what gets you to the postseason. Yeah. Bad offense, you're not going anywhere. And, and right. And I'm not and, and 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 I'm not sure, you know, defense wins championship is a thing anymore. I, I don't Sometimes even know if it, it is. You know, yeah. I mean, I know what Pass you're saying. Pass rush can. Right. Pass I, rush I know. can. I'm with you. I'm just saying, you know, we see some teams now with great offenses and they can overcome it and all that. But you're you're right. I I, I know what you're saying all the way. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is what has to be done. You know, there's more there's more videos and, and things of Eric Bieniemy yelling at the greatest quarterback of our little era right now in Patrick Mahomes, and we've seen anybody in Washington yelling at any quarterback on the sidelines there. I mean, we can find a few videos every year of Eric Bieniemy getting in Patrick Mahomes' face, Tyreek Hill's face. Good, good, the list goes on and on. Washington, maybe that's what they need is some people in your face a little bit. You know, I don't know. I'm old school. I grew up at a house where, you know, as my dad always says, he didn't realize his name started with a PH until he retired because it was always effing Sims, effing Sims. 
You know, Bill Parcells was the coach. I, I, that's the, I don't know. I grew up in the 80s. I know Bill Walsh was a jerk of all jerks to the staff, the players, and it resulted in three Super Bowls. That's the way it goes. Jimmy Johnson, what do you think that was? A water, you know, a water park camp over there in Dallas? He was crazy. You know, Chuck Knoll, your Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know. I never saw the guy smile ever in Pittsburgh. What do you think that was going on? Vince Lombardi is Terry Bradshaw famous. never got along. Right. Never got along with exactly. Terry Bradshaw. Exactly. Right. It goes into what the enemy's saying. You know, he's embracing the uncomfortableness there. Vince Lombardi is famous for being a jerk. You got to be a jerk to be a great head coach most of the times. You got to find that balance to a degree, and maybe that's where Ron Rivera was going in on it. But, you know, football, is it's tough. And, and usually the tough coaches who coach their team tough and have no nonsense, no excuses, they're the ones that, you know, succeed a lot in this league. One of my regrets for the quarterback series that we talked about previously, and it was all the rage last month, there were no scenes of any interaction between Eric Bieniemy. And Patrick Mahomes, nothing, nothing. And very yeah. limited Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. That was one of the ground rules that Reid set. Right. No filming of meetings. And I suspect it was also, we don't need anyone else to know how the sausage gets made. I would we think so. We don't need others to understand. And, what you know, maybe these commanders players would, would, would understand it if they saw on the quarterback series Eric Bieniemy giving it to Patrick Mahomes the way Biennemi is giving it to right. them. So there may have been some method to that madness. You don't want other players to buy into what it takes to be great. Then it's harder to be the greatest if other teams are committed to also being great. But Tyree Kill, the voice of reason on this, who would have had that on well, the bingo card? Tyree yeah. Kill chimes in Home. and says, there is no other coach that has your back like EB. It's tough, but I promise it will make you better. That's Tyree Kill, who was with the enemy for many years in Kansas City. Yeah, look at Jamal Charles underneath that. I love EB. I know he a different coach, but I know one thing. He can take take another level, though, you know? So they're, they're trying to tell you that. Uh, that. That's what they're saying. And 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 just give it time. You know, he'll have – there'll be a time where he puts his arm around you. People always used to tell me, right, with John Gruden, Right? When he's when he ain't yelling at you and when he ain't talking to you, that's when he's giving up to you. When he's on your ass and yelling at you all the time and on you all the time, that means he sees something in you and he bring it, he wants to bring the best out in you. Right? That's a lot of, a lot of the way these coaches, you know, act and react. Now, you know, of course, it'll help once they get out in the field and they have some results and all of a sudden they go, damn, we're kind of good at offense. You know, this guy is psycho in a good way. It, it's he's leading us in the right direction. But Tyree Kill understands what work is. He gets that. You know, he he understands that completely. And that's why he's been embraced by Mike McDaniel, who's from a psycho and Kyle Shanahan in a lot of ways. And that's what they expect. So, you know, that's where I think there's a disconnect between some of the college programs and then some guys in the league just don't realize right now what some of the great teams are doing and the intensity in which they're approaching every day. And uh, it's kind of a culture shock, like they say. Okay, so let's rewind to the beginning of this yeah. conversation. Then. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love Ron Rivera. If there were a Ron Rivera fan club, and I don't know whether there is or isn't, I'd be at least one of the officers. Maybe not the president, but I'd be the treasurer. Okay, um, He's been a great coach in the NFL. He's right. been under some difficult circumstances at times, never had a great team, and, and he got the most out of the 2015 Panthers, got them as far as he could, and that's one of the examples of defense wins championships because it was that – Broncos pass rush that day that made the difference in Super Bowl 50. Sure. But, but th th this is what confuses me. Rivera's reaction to the question. Why not just say what we've said the past 10 minutes? Folks, Eric bien comes from Kansas City with a couple of Super Bowl rings. He knows a thing or two about what it takes to be great. And if these players have a problem with our effort to be great, they are in the wrong line of work. We are here not to just be good enough. We are here not to collect a paycheck. We are here to be great. Why not just say that? I, Mike, I, 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 that's what I would have liked to have, liked to have hear, heard him say. Yeah, you know, don't give wiggle room. You know, don't give wiggle room to the media. Don't give wiggle room to your players right now. You know, it, it's a big year for Ron Rivera and everything that goes into it. So uh, that would be... What I would have advised, yeah, back the culture up, back the guy up. Let your players who 
are complaining. And, and again, I'm thinking about their football team, right? And I go, just as off the top of my head, other than, you know, they signed a right tackle and, you know, Wiley from Kansas City, the, the majority of that offense has never been anywhere or been anything unsuccessful. I'm just going through my brain real quick here. The two running backs, no. You know, Robinson was from Alabama. I'm sure he knows what worked, but the receivers, they're, they've been pretty much in Washington. Curtis Samuel was with Ron Rivera in Carolina. They don't have guys that have been to other teams and know what it takes to, to get to the Super Bowl and be that type of team. Even the defensive side of the ball. You know, I know I'm maybe forgetting a guy or two here, but there's certainly no star that that can bring that to the table there for Washington. So they're going to the phrase of like they don't even know what they don't know, and and that's what they're getting hit in the face with right now. I know that this is going to sound very get off my lawnish, but I really don't care. I wonder if it is a generational thing, and I think back to some of the reactions I got when I dared to criticize Kirk Cousins for having this weird thing where he shuts down his entire football career one day a week during the season. And my take on that is if you truly want to be great, you can't wall it off for 24 hours one day a week I would agree. during football season I would agree. when you got seven months off and you got the rest of your life to not play football. You either want to be great or you don't. Right. I was having this conversation with my son not that long ago. You wake up one day and you ask yourself, do I want to be great or do I not want to be great? And you act accordingly as to however you resolve that question. Do I want to be great at what I do or do I not? It's a very simple choice. Very. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Right. If the answer is yes, guess what? Guess what? That's not the easier path. Guess what? You're going to make some sacrifices. You're going to be doing stuff when you don't feel like doing it. You're going to be dragging your ass out of bed at a time when you don't want to drag your ass out of bed. You're going to be staying up late at a time when you'd rather be doing something else. You're going to be working when you'd rather be playing video games. You're going to not go to that concert you'd like to go to out of town or up the road or whatever because you got other things that you need to do. And you are pursuing the path of great. So... And, you know, people ask me, and not that I've been all that successful, but hell, I don't work for a living. I get paid to talk about football. You make the choice at some point, whatever it is you choose to do. Do I want to be great or do I not? And you either make it consciously or it gets made for you. So what Eric Biennemi is trying to get these guys to do is choose to be great. That's right. Right. You know, you need a, a battleship commander, not a cruise ship coordinator, right? That's what Bill Parcells used to say to my dad. It's always stuck in my brain. You know, even when you're not working, fake working. You know, that, that, that's what he used to say. He goes, Sims, I, he, dad, my dad will tell the story. He goes, Sims, Sims, you know, uh, uh, listen, I want you to work hard and all that. But, you know, if you got to bring a bunch of tapes and let the locker room watch you walk into the meeting room and you just go in there and go to sleep, that's fine. But uh, these guys need to see this stuff, right? He used to say that. You know that. what? They're, hey, some folks in New England might say Parcells perfected that later in his career, but I digress. <laughs> but but that's where, you know, that that's what, that's what again, you're you're spot on. That's what takes the, the takes to be successful in football. I think that's why part of these you know personality tests and these traits and all those things are a big thing in football right now because teams like New England and the 49ers and you know all the, those type those type of places they're looking for guys that you know like we say we know that are a psycho in a good way. They're gonna work. They're not gonna ask questions. They're just gonna do what the coach says, and it's gonna be for the better of the team. You know, there is that. And to your point, Mike, I remember with, I got with Josh McDaniel in Denver. And, of course, he had just come from the GOAT and Brady and being the best team for 10 years in a row. And I remember him going, guys, guys, Tuesday, Tuesday, that's not a day off for quarterbacks in the NFL. Tom Brady never took a Tuesday off ever. I mean, come on. We got the whole offseason to have days off. And Tuesday, we, we, we need to work still, right? And 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 I, when he said that, I was like, yeah, damn right. I mean, I was never a guy that just took Tuesday off in general anyways. But I realized, like, man, yeah, Brady's doing it. There's work to be done. There's more you can do. And let's go to the next level and push the limit that way. And I think that's where, you know, Eric Bieniemy's trying to instill that into his football team. They got to live it 24-7, like you're saying, Mike. And great example of the dynamic the Johnny Manziel documentary on Netflix, Untold Johnny Football, 
we wrote something about it just before the show started where he embraces the fact that he did nothing. He did nothing. He put in the work. Zero right. film. The, the, the Browns said to his agent, his iPad time is zero, zero minutes point and zero, zero, zero. Point zero <laughs> seconds. <laughs> right. Yes, zero, zero, zero. Right. I, I remember when they were considering starting him December of 2014. It was unknown whether it was going to be him or Brian Hoyer. The coaches were going to make the decision, and they were going to let them know Wednesday morning, and he goes to a Cavs game on Tuesday night. Right. So, and, and look, hey, you know, it's a free country. It's a free country. The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness – includes the right to screw your life up if you choose to do so. Sure. But he had an opportunity there to just say, I'm going to start. I'm going to act accordingly. I'm going to start. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to put in the time. And this is why all that time and all that money and all that effort spent scouting players is ultimately worthless because there's no way to project which of these guys is going to embrace what it takes to be great and which ones are just trying to collect a paycheck ride the gravy train as long as they can before they step off with whatever they're going to do for the rest of their life after their football career well, is over. I, I mean, uh, you, yeah, you don't know, but they do know to a degree. I, I'll disagree with you there, you know. Well, they don't do a good job well, of some selecting of them the players the caps, if that's the case. Yeah, well, again, hey, that's what happens when your owner comes in and tells, you know, hey, the homeless guy off the street told me to drive Johnny Manziel. <laughs> <laughs> he had plenty of people yeah. in the organization telling him this ain't the right pick. He did. So that one's their own fault, and they can, you know, eat that. But, yeah, you know, to your point, he didn't put in the time or effort. I mean, he, he you know, had to be – he couldn't say the plays in the huddle. He had to be walked through that, and it was week 10 and whatever else. Oh, so. wait, wait. God for God forbid, God forbid a rookie quarterback can't say the play. By week 10, I that's, could say him, okay? That's that was a the hanging th- that, <laughs> <laughs> By week 10, I could say him, okay? You jerk. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, you know, that's it's, – it's, but, but to, your, to what you're saying, you know, yes, it's not a perfect system, right? But – you know, New England, they, they for a number of years got New England type of guys because of the, the personality testing. And, you know, like I said, the 49ers and Shanahan, they, they have a look in a certain way of guy they want that they know fits their culture. Does it work every time? No. But, you know, they can get close enough to where, you know, seven out of ten times they, 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 they get it right. Uh, so th- that's where the personality testing comes in. And, hey, right now they're going through some culture shock there in Washington on the o- offensive side of the ball. This is the first time a lot of those guys have come to, whoa, there's a dictator in the room. It's, it's, we've kind of been part of a democracy the last few years. Well, if football ain't that way. It's somebody that, you know, is the boss and he tells you what to do. And if he don't like it, then your ass is on the bench. And they're, they're learning that right now. Uh, and then there's the player who is so great that none of that stuff matters. And I could imagine what Deion Sanders would have said at New England if they had tried to get him to take a personality test on a visit. He would have said, when do you draft? I'll be gone before then. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> but take your to, personality test. To that test point, you too, stick you know, again, sideways. that's where, where, where I think there's a, 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 something is lost in translation. Like Deion Sanders, any story you ever hear about him, like the most intense practice guy you've ever seen in your life in Jerry Rice's face, shutting him down, like to the point where people had to be like, whoa, you know, you don't have to be this crazy every day in practice. That's what he's famous for. You know, I don't think people realize that's what made Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis or Reggie White, Reggie White. You know, so many of the greats that I was fortunate to be around, Brian Dawkins, Ty Law, I got to see their psychoness for how and how professional they were and attacking it day by day and what they did. Kevin Mawai, the center for the, in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that that's where I think sometimes the public just goes, oh, these guys are cool and they're just naturally gifted. And I want to say, no, nine out of ten times, like that guy that you think is cool and naturally gifted is the biggest gym rat in the, the locker room. You know, he's just cool and he plays cool, but he's really a nerd and just wants to work out and go throw footballs and work on his drills and go home and watch more football and watch hard knocks and watch highlights. That's what the really great ones do. They're obsessed with it. Like you are writing articles for pro football talk and following the league. That, that's what you got to do if you want to be successful. Yeah, you don't just roll out of bed 
and go play at a high level in the NFL. There's like very a short few guys list. have that kind of God given right. skill. Right. You still have to have the determination, the will, and the ethic to put in the time to get the results. It looks easy because they make it look easy. Right. Not because it is easy, but because they're so prepared. And when no one is watching, they've put in the time and they've put in the effort that they make it look easy and people don't understand. I remember being in school. This I'm having flashback. You know, you get an A on the test and you got this friend that says, oh, I could get straight A's too if I studied. It's like, well, why don't you? <laughs> like, like, why don't you? You know, like, use it. If you got a brain, use it. If you got the great physical ability, use it. Get the most out of it. I think there's some biblical stuff about that. The parable of talents. What do you do with what you've been given? Do you just sit on it or do you do something with it? There's an obligation to do something with it. And the great football players are all quietly and discreetly busting their asses when the rest of us are sleeping That's or playing right. video games That's right. or otherwise not busting our asses. All right, let's take a break. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.